Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing great. So I decided to do something a little different with this project. I was going to make a custom duck call, but I really needed to be able to stabilize the wood for the call as with duck calls, they're used in a wet environment and a lot of times in water and it's they just get wet a lot. So I ordered some cactus juice, but it was going to be a little while before it actually came in and I just honestly didn't want to wait. I got impatient. So I decided to try using Minwax wood hardener that you can buy at Lowe's for about $12 a can and gonna try to use it in my vacuum chamber and see how that works out. Now I did not want this in the bottom of my chamber just because it hardens without any kind of heat and it would be extremely difficult to clean out of the bottom of my vacuum chamber after it was hardened. So I decided to make a small cylindrical mold out of some two inch PVC pipe and a coupler and cap as to just make it to where I didn't have to worry about cleaning up a lot of the wood hardener resin out of my vacuum chamber. It was just something I didn't want to have to deal with. Now the mold is just a two inch piece of PVC cut to about 10 inches long, a coupler added to the end with some PVC cement, and I just tighten on a cap at the end so it would be flat and also removable just in case I needed to clean it out or be able to remove any of the liquids inside the tube for some reason. Now it was just as simple as adding the wood which was spalted gumwood and the hardener. And after that just pretty much putting it in the vacuum chamber and letting it do its thing until all of the air bubbles had stopped and let it dry for 24 hours. After it had cured for the 24 hour period, it was time to get to making the epoxy mold. I decided to use some Lexan and it was really simple, cut it to shape and just fill in all the seams with some hot glue. After finishing up the mold, it was time to start mixing up the epoxy. Now I used about eight ounces of this total boat epoxy and some purple and pearl, pearl X pigments. Now I custom mixed these and I just kind of added the pigments as I thought was needed. Um, I, I don't use measuring for my pigments. I go until the color is where I want it and, and just how I like it. That's how I mix my colors. That's why there's always a little variation but that's also what to me makes them unique. And now time for my favorite part, the pour. Maybe. Eventually. With the mold all full, it was time to throw it in the pressure pot, let it cure, and get it on the lathe. It was time to turn. The first step in turning down this duck call was going to be to turn off all the square edges and get it rough down to a nice cylindrical shape so I could get it into the four jaw chuck and actually drill out the center part of the call. Also guys, when you're turning something with a lot of epoxy, make sure that you take your time and your chisels are sharp. That way you don't get too much tear out and also keeps the epoxy from shattering. Now after I got the blank cut down to a really nice cylinder shape, it was time to cut down a small tenon to fit into the four jaw chuck so that we can add the hole all the way through the duck call. At this point, I drilled out a 5 8 inch hole all the way through the cylindrical bank. Now, most duck calls have a decorative steel ring on the end where the insert goes. So, the first thing you have to do when installing one of these is actually 
narrow down the blank so the ring can fit on snugly. Now don't try to do this in one pass. You just make multiple passes with light cuts and keep checking until the ring fits extremely snugly on this. That way you have a little bit of room left so when you sand it still fits snugly and when it's glued on it's good and in place. Now after that you pretty much only have to mark your width of your ring and your depth is already set by the previous cut you just made. After getting your width marked, it's just as simple as using the parting tool to actually cut down that section of the blank just so you have enough width for the ring to fit on and fit flush with the end. Now another thing is to make sure not to go too deep as you don't want your ring to fit loosely afterwards. And also check your work. It's okay to stop as many times as you need. You can always start up again, but cutting too much off is very difficult to fix. Now it's just a process of shaping the duck call. Now there's many different shapes for a duck call, but I had a specific one in mind. It was something that to me is comfortable in the hand and easy to use. So I took my time and kept checking my work, going back and forth, making sure to not cut things I did not mean to. After that, it was on to the sanding. I started with 80 grit and then to 180 grit just to get everything roughed down and smoothed out. After the 180 grit, I started wet sanding with 400 grit, then to 1000 grit. And then after the 1000 grit moved on to micro mesh, going from 1500 grit progressively to 8000. The entire way, making sure to keep adding water as it cleans off the pads and make sure that your sandpaper doesn't get clogged and scratch up your surface. And it also makes the cutting much, much easier. After finishing up with the 8000 grit micro mesh, it was time to add the finish. I was going to use a CA glue finish on this particular call as I wanted a super high gloss and very durable finish. I wanted it to come out almost like a glass top finish. Making sure to hit the ends as well as the top with the CA glue before I used a little activator just so it would pretty much instantly harden. Now this is a stick fast CA glue finishing kit I ordered off Amazon. There will be a link in the description if you guys are interested in using this particular finishing kit. The great thing about these CA glue finishing kits is that they're instantly ready to start finishing out and sanding. So I started back with some 8000 grit micro mesh and worked my way from 8000 grit all the way up to 12000 grit. Now with this Never let your micro mesh or your sanding pad sit still for too long as it will go through the CA glue finish and you'll have to start the process all over again. Also, I enjoy the wet sanding process. To me, water makes this cut very, very cleanly and so much better than just trying to do a dry sanding process. So I also suggest keeping the pad really moist, adding water, pretty often you don't have to keep it just fully saturated but pretty often adding water and always moving the pad back and forth as you don't want to cause any damage to your finishes but this micro mesh up to 12,000 grit on a CA glue finish just gives this awesome glass like appearance once it's finished out and you're done sanding it is extremely glossy without any other processes alone so once it's done with that and you head over to polishing it just pops and becomes this amazingly beautiful high gloss finish that's extremely durable Before mounting the ring to the call and permanently affixing it to it, you need to make sure to scuff up the inside of the ring. Now this just gives the glue or epoxy or whatever adhesive you use just a little better gripping surface on the inside of the ring to your call. Now you can just add a little bit of CA glue to the end of the call and I didn't want it spilling over onto the finished surface so I cleaned up a little bit of it. I didn't want a whole lot and then sprayed a little bit of activator to the inside of the ring itself so once you push the ring onto the CA glue it instantly cures and it's on there for good.
Now it was time for buffing. Now this three wheel system that I have for my lathe works amazingly. It's actually the very first time I've used this particular system and I am super impressed with it. I will make sure to leave a link in the description below if you guys are interested in it. Now the catch with this is it's pretty much a harder pad with a lower grit compound to a softer pad with a higher grit compound. And the only trick to it really is never let your call or whatever your project is sit still against the pad as it will burn it or burn off any finish you have on it. So just make sure to keep your project moving while you're using buffing wheels. I have it set to a pretty high speed also, but it, that's just because it felt comfortable to me and it was coming out as a really great finish. But again, just don't let your project sit still. And also just make sure you use plenty of compound on each wheel and that will help a lot. I am super happy with the outcome of this thing. It is absolutely gorgeous. And if you guys are interested in ordering one of my calls, make sure to check out my Instagram page at JPayne Woodworking, where you can PM me and order one. And everything I've used in this video will have a link down in the description. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys later.